Hey guys, Phil from Trail Talk MTB here, and today we're going to be talking about the best budget full suspension trail bikes for 2019. So before Christmas, I thought it'd be a good idea to go over my top five budget full suspension trail bikes for the year. Everyone's definition of budget is going to be different, but where I think value meets performance when it comes to budget is around three and a half thousand Australian dollars, which equates to around about two thousand pounds and two and a half thousand US dollars. So there's been a lot of improvements in these kind of entry-level bikes for 2019. We're seeing a lot of improvements in geometry, but particularly we're seeing a lot of those more high-end products are trickling down to these lower price points. So an example of this is the RockShox Revelation, which we're seeing is featuring the Charger Damper in some models this year. And then we're also seeing the introduction of the cheaper SRAM Eagle drivetrain. So SRAM NX Eagle uh, is now out in a lot of the cheaper models. And in some of these models, we're even seeing SRAM GX Eagles. So a lot of great value is out there this year. So before we delve into which bikes I think are the best value for money this year, do we just want to define a bit of a criteria? So when it comes to a trail bike, I'm talking about a real all-rounder. So if you ride XC as much as you do Enduro and a lot of your riding kind of focuses in the middle of that, then these are the ideal bikes that you should be going for. So ideally, this is what I kind of look for in a trail bike. So a head angle of 66.5 to 67.5. This strikes a good balance between climbing ability and a lot of confidence when you're descending. Around about 110 to 130 millimeters of rear suspension travel. This keeps things nice and efficient, but there's still enough travel there to kind of handle some decent hits, especially when the suspension is pretty progressive. Preferably a steeper seat angle. So a lot of these bikes for 2019 are featuring a steeper seat angle. It's not as vital on these shorter travel bikes because there's less squish in the suspension, so you don't sag into it and the seat angle seconds out. So anything from around about 74 to 76 is really ideal on these kind of bikes. So we want a reach of around about 455 to 470. This keeps things not too long, but still pretty comfortable, especially if you're running around about a 50 millimeter stem, which strikes a good balance between descending and also getting over the front when you're climbing. And lastly, short chain stays. The main thing about a trail bike is just to have fun. So we're not going super crazy fast speeds like you are on an enduro bike. So chain stay length isn't, doesn't have to be too long. So anything kind of around about 425 to 435, uh, that keeps it nice and playful and still enough kind of stability there when you kind of get up to some decent speeds. So put all this together and you should get a bike that descends as well as it climbs. So we're trying to keep it fun, don't need to go crazy, long, slack, slow, all that kind of jargon like that. Just keep it simple, it's something that you can have fun climbing with your friends and then descending as well. So the first bike I've picked is actually one that I've been reviewing and that's the new Norco Fluid FS. So looking at the bike, you can see it there. Um, looking at the specs, so really good spec, better value, for, really good value for money, and they've really thought about the specs. So they've really spent money on the frame, then the suspension as well. So looking at the frame, you've got an alloy frame, boost, really good geometry, and we'll go into that a bit later. So up front, you've got the new Revelation RC with the charger damper. Uh, they put the charger damper in a lot of the Revelations for this year. Really great fork, plush, supportive where you need it. Uh, the design, the bike's actually designed around the Deluxe R, so there's no real need for a lockout on a short travel bike like this, so not nearly necessary. And then we're seeing that trickle down um, from a lot of more of the expensive bikes, so we're seeing that NX Eagle on these cheaper bikes these days. So you've got that 12 speed and that big range in 11 to 50 tooth cassette. Um, brakes, you've got the Guide T's, not my personal favourite, but still 4 piston hydraulic brakes on a cheap bike, that's great. And then wheels, you've got some tubeless ready wheels and some 2.6 inch Maxxis tires. So, a bit onto the geometry. So the bike comes in 27.5 as well as 29. So in those smaller sizes, you're gonna get 27.5. In those bigger sizes, you're gonna get 29. So extra small to medium, 27.5. And then in your 29s, you're gonna get medium through to XL. For most of these bikes, I'd probably recommend going the 29. They're just gonna pedal a bit better, a bit more versatile. So going off the large, cause that's pretty much the size that most people kind of buy, even though medium would indicate that most people would ride it, but most people typically go for a large. So looking at the head angle, you've got a 66.5 degree head angle with your standard offset, so still 51 millimeters. Really like that on these kind of bikes, and I'll go into that a bit later. Um, seat tube angle, really steep, 76 degrees. Um, and then you've got decent wheelbase, so 1.2 meters, keeps it stable. Um, other than that, short chain stays as well, so 429, keeps it short, keeps it playful. That's what we want on these kinds of bikes. So the fluid, 
awesome bike, really capable. It's gonna favor someone that probably descends a bit more um, on the slightly heavier side. But yeah, the money has really been spent where you want it on that frame geometry as well as the suspension. So the next bike is actually another one that I've been reviewing and that's the 2019 Merida 120 and that's also been updated like the fluid for this year. So it's seen some big changes. Unfortunately, Merida isn't available in the US, but for the rest of the world, it's a really great deal. Personally, my pick would be the uh, 120 800. However, if your budget doesn't allow for it, the 600 is a great option. The 800, however, can be found as low as 3,179 Australian dollars, and that gives you a lot of great spec. So, going down to the spec here, we can see again it's got that revelation like the fluid has, really great fork. You've got the Deluxe RL on the back. Big thing on this bike, you've got the SRAM GX Eagle, that's an awesome group set. Have it on my bike, love it. Really great range, uh, performance is awesome. Uh, you've also got the Shimano MT500 brakes, reliable brakes, uh, really good as well. And then you've got tubeless ready tires as well as wheels. And you've also got a really great dropper post in the KS Lev Integra. Uh, again, great spec. But the other thing that's also great to know, the geometry is also good. So bang up to date, 67.3 degree head angle and 75.5 degree seat angle. So it puts you in a really great position for pedaling. Uh, the rear suspension on the 120 is really great as well. It uses the floating link, so similar to kind of what Trek has on their bikes. As the shot compresses, it also pulls away. So it kind of feels like you got a bit more travel than you actually do. But it still offers a really good pedaling platform, so lots of anti-squat there as well. Um, slightly short reach compared to a lot of the other bikes, so 455, so not great, but for this kind of bike, it's definitely good, and it offers a really well-balanced package between climbing and descending. Like the Fluid, it's also available in 27.5 and 29 in the same kind of sizes, so 27.5, extra small through to medium, and then for the 29, medium through to extra large. This is a really great bike, and it's definitely gonna favor one that, someone that really wants to pedal, but still has fun on the descents. So the third bike I've picked, a uh, few of you might not like because it is a bit generic, um, but it is the Giant Trans 29er. Giants has always offered great value for money, and the Trans 29er is no exception to that. Retailing at 3699 I'm sure you're gonna be able to find it below that 3500 Australian dollars. Um, but it offers a really good good package. So looking at the drivetrain, you've got NX Eagles, so same as the Fluid. But big thing here, you've got great suspension. So you've got that Fox 34 rhythm up front, and then you've also got the Fox DPS in the rear, which is a trunnion shock, um, also using that metric sizing. So a lot more sensitive than the shocks of uh, yesteryear. Um, Giant has really stepped up um, their geometry as well this year. So having a look at the geometry of the bike, so looking at the large, uh, we can see that the set seat angle has uh, been steepened a little bit. The Giants used to kind of sit around the 73.5, which really isn't ideal. On a shorter travel bike, as I said, you can kind of get away with a slightly slacker seat angle, but they've put it up a bit more for this year, so 74.5. Um, 66.5 degree head angle, so that's great for this kind of bike. Then 4 to 62 reach with a 50 millimeter, 50 millimeter stem on the large size. Um, so overall, great package. Uh, the main downside I'm seeing with this bike, um, that they've used a shorter offset fork. Um, so going into a little bit why I don't like this, I'll do go into a bit more depth in a future video. Um, but I really feel like you need a really long reach and a really slack head angle to kind of justify having that shorter offset. So kind of looking around that 65 degrees, as well as a pretty long reach. So on a large, something kind of around about a 480. With the shorter offset and a shorter reach, um, with that slack, uh, that steep uh, head angle, it kind of feels like the wheel's tucked under you a little bit. And if you've got a longer stem, it kind of feels like you're pitched over the bike a bit more. So when you go into corners, it can kind of feel like it's tucking over you. And if you're going over steep stuff and you're pitched a bit too far forward, it really feels like you're going over the front of the bike, uh, which I don't think is ideal. Um, a shorter offset increases the trail figure, which actually increases stability. But on these kind of bikes, I just feel like there's too much trade-off. So I definitely prefer the older 51 millimeter offset uh, with these kind of styles of bike. But yeah, the Giant, other than that, great bike. 
Um, the suspension's really good, the Maestro, super active under braking, uh, super sensitive as well. So the next bike I've picked is a bit of an outlier in the group. It doesn't offer the best value for money, but if you focus more on the descending side of things and you feel like you're really going to progress on that kind of side, I think it's definitely a great bike to build up on, and that's the Fuji Rakan. Now this bike has also been updated for 2019, another 29, I'm sorry guys, but I just think they're really good for this kind of uh, trail bike. Uh, so the bike's a lot longer, uh, slacker, um, the reach is pretty crazy on this bike, so 490 reach on a large, that's pretty out there and a 12 24 wheelbase so uh, 24 millimeters longer, uh, longer than any of the others uh, that we're looking at today and the head angle is also 66 degrees so the spec definitely isn't the best on this bike um, but it offers a really good platform for someone that really wants to descend um, push their descending in the future so you can have this bike and then really upgrade it um, and it would definitely suit you really well in the future so having a look at the spec to start with so as you see, Recon fork up front, not the best fork, uh, 130 millimeters of travel. Still get a decent shock, so the Deluxe RL. Um, but yeah, you're getting a 1x10 drivetrain, so not the best, but it still has an 11 to 42 tooth cassette, so decent amount of range. However, as this wears out, you definitely want to change it over to something else. Um, still got tubeless ready wheels and tires. Um, and however you don't have the best brakes uh, so Shimano MT201 so this would definitely be something that I'd probably change first um, because you're going to be going super fast on this bike it's just going to want you to go fast 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 um, and these brakes probably aren't going to stop you in the best uh, most of the situations however you do get a great dropper pace in the KS Lev so looking into the geometry as I said really slack but the thing that you really need to take away with this bike looking at that effective top tube so 654 in a large that's crazy so most bikes in a large are going to have around about 630 so they haven't steepened up the seat angle to ridiculous amounts to kind of bring that effective top tube back so it's still 75 degrees but they've made the front end uh, front center super long so a lot of people are going to be have to be running a 35 30 millimeter stem to feel comfortable on this bike on a large and that's going to affect the climbing and make the bike not as versatile so what i'd recommend for people if they just want more of an all-round trail bike size down and that will give you geometry very similar to the fluids so 470 reach you still got a 66 degree head angle and that brings it back to a 626 effective top tube so i think that would be perfect so if you're looking for more just a general trail bike maybe size down to the medium but if you're looking for something that you really want to push descending go up to that large uh, the suspension on this bike haven't tried it yet but the new m-link suspension it's still kind of like a horse link but it moves that pivot on the chain stay uh, more towards the center so going back up looking about there so it'll be really interesting to see how this ride i think it should offer really decent pedaling platform um, and then should be pretty progressive towards the end as well so definitely give this one a look so with the last bike we're going back to the roots of mountain biking with a marin and it's the marin hawk hill 3 and it's actually a 27.5 bike so something you can have a bit more fun on so this bike has almost identical frame geometry uh, to the trance so looking at it here, we have a 66.5 degree head angle, 74.3 uh, degree seat angle, and then you got a decent reach on there at 465, so pretty comfortable for those on the size large. And the spec's great too, so looking at the spec, we've got that revelation up front, uh, great fork, you can upgrade it to the pike in the future if you want to put in that charger damper. Uh, also you got the float uh, DPS in the rear, great shock as well. A uh, lot of uh, Marin branded stuff, so the tubeless wheels and a few other things, bar stem, all that kind of stuff. Um, but there's also some good stuff in there, so uh, 1x11 SLX drivetrain, 11 to 46 cassette. And then you've also got the Tektro Orion 4 piston brakes. Uh, Tektro is more of a budget brand, but their 4 piston brakes are actually really good. And then you have big rotors on there as well, so 203, so really big rotor. So this bike's going to be great for a lot of people. It's built for fun is what Marin says, so really great. Um, however, it's less sophisticated in the suspension, so uh, it uses a linkage actuated uh, single pivot. So not going to be the most active under braking. Uh, it's a little bit harsher over more chunky stuff, um, but it's definitely going to be really fun, really progressive bike. 
Um, then if you actually prefer the 29 side of things, uh, there's also the rift zone. So great option, slightly steeper seat angle on that one. And then you also get a slightly steeper head angle to kind of compensate for the wheels, which you don't really need to do, but it's a 67.5 degree head angle. Um, and that's a great bike as well. So the Marin's really great value for money. Um, and if you're looking for similar bikes, there's some polygon polygons out there and they come from the same factory and a lot of the geos fairly similar between them. So they're worth a look as well. So there you go, that's my top five budget trail bikes for this year. A um, few honorable mentions that didn't really fit in because they might have had a bit too much travel, favoured descending more than anything, or they were just a bit too much out of the budget. Uh, so we've got the Stump Jumper ST, so brand new for this year. Um, we've also got the new Cannondale Habit, a um, bit too much travel and focus a bit more on descending, but it would definitely still be a pretty efficient bike and pretty, um, pretty fun. And then we've also got the GT Sensor, so Big change for GT this year, going back to the horse link. Um, but yeah, just a bit too much out of the budget and focus too much on descending. Um, I'll also do another kind of budget one on more all mountain bikes and they might fit into that category. So I may have missed some bikes. If I missed something or your favorite bike or you just think I genuinely missed one that you think should be uh, in this top five, leave it in the comments and I'll have a chat to you about it. Um, I may have just forgot it completely. Um, if you enjoyed the video, drop a, give us a like, um, subscribe to the channel. Um, I'll also be doing another budget enduro bikes coming out soon and then I'll also be doing a buyer's guide for some more high-end bikes for both trail or mountain enduro bikes and that should be coming soon. I'll be leaving them in the bio when they're out. Thanks for listening guys.